we'll take a slice of that. All right, so I've been asked many times now uh, how I built this gasifier. So I don't have any video footage or, or photos to show you the build. So I figured I'd go ahead and make a video and I'll add some animation in between it uh, to kind of help you understand what's going on inside of this machine here and how it works. So uh, let's get started on that. So the main tank here is the reactor. Uh, so what I did is I had an old air compressor uh, setting around, the motor didn't work anymore. So I pulled the motor off and decided to use the main tank to create my reactor out of, which is only from here to here. I'll explain what all the other stuff is in a minute. But uh, so this is just an air compressor tank that I cut a hole out of the side and welded uh, some flat iron square out so I could make a plate to be able to clean out the ashes as I burn. And we'll get to that in more detail as well. Um, but I'll show you real quick in the drawing uh, what I did here to create the main tank, the reactor. First, cut out a four inch diameter hole in the top of the tank dead center using a hole saw. Next, cut off the top of the entire tank using an angle grinder with a cutting wheel. Remember to always wear the proper safety gear. After you have the hole cut and the top ring cut off, it is on to the next step. The top side of the tank will be the side you cut off. I cut out a six inch by eight inch square hole in the bottom of the tank that will be used as my clean out access point. Next, I cut out a one inch hole in the side of the tank that will become my ignition port. Now it's time to make the burn tube. Here I used a four inch steel tubing, 16 inches long. At the base of the tube, I cut a one inch hole where the ignition port will be welded to. This hole needs to be just above the base where the fuel basket will be placed. Now that the burn tube is made, it is time to attach it to the tank. I did this by welding three pieces of flat stock steel around the top of the burn tube. Be sure to measure out perfect thirds for the placement. In the center of each brace, drill out a hole large enough to attach a chain through. Attach the chains to all three braces and hang the length of the burn tube. This is where your fuel basket will hang from. Now the burn tube is almost complete. The next step is to make the fuel basket. I used a three inch wide, quarter inch thick piece of, piece of steel flat stock. I bent it into a perfect ring about eight inches in diameter. I welded the ring together. Next I used half inch rebar and made a grate across the bottom that the wood pellets will rest on from the burn tube. Attach the fuel basket to the suspended chains. You can weld the chain or drill out three holes in the basket as well. Your basket should hang just below the burn tube. Finally, you will take your entire burn tube assembly and insert it into the tank. Be sure that you remember to leave the right length of the burn tube above your braces that when you put the top back on, your burn tube hole and your lid hole meet up. Weld the three braces into the tank. Then take a one inch pipe through the tank and flush against the one inch hole of your burn tube. Weld the tank side and the burn tube side. Now you have an ignition port. Last weld the top of your tank back on. Also weld the burn tube top to the hole in the ring. Your system has to be airtight. This here was just a uh, burnt out fire extinguisher. So I took the fire extinguisher uh, head off of it and uh, emptied it out. And I used this to make my cyclone filter. So this was just uh, an old, like I said, old, old uh, fire extinguisher. And this main tank here was just an old air compressor tank. So. This uh, became a cyclone filter, which this center pipe here runs all the way down to about two inches from the bottom of this tank. So as the draw comes in from here, when it's burning, it pulls through this pipe, goes into the top of the cyclone filter, and in theory, the smoke spins around the center pipe as it's coming in in an angle, forcing the smoke to spin around come down this is a drip jar to catch tar and water uh, things you don't want to be trying to pump to your your carburetor um, so it uh, pumps through that but as you're pulling the air through at the bottom of this cyclone filter is this tube which sucks up the cleaner gas that you're creating um, because most of your tars and things like that will stick to the side of this tank as it spins and goes down and then, of course, this is the drip jar, so it drips down into here. You can take the jar off and pour it out. Um, moving on. 
So as the smoke pools from your reactor into the cyclone filter, spins around, drips out tar and nastiness and water, pretty much a lot of water, and then sucks up from the pipe inside, comes out, pulls through this pipe, this down pipe here, which is cleaner gas than what was there, comes down and what I've done is I've added a secondary drip jar. Now the jar is right here. I've got it off because I'm getting ready to mount this to a trailer and I cut the legs off of this so there's not enough room sitting here for this jar to go on. But you can understand the jar spins onto this here, secondary drip jar. Here I've added another, another valve uh, or the first uh, control valve so I can limit the amount of uh, gas is pulled through it or I can open it all the way up whatever's whatever's making it run best as it's running so that goes down into the radiator that I built now I'll explain the radiator to you the gases are pulled through that tube up into the radiator the gas goes through the radiator separates in each one of these tubes going up to uh, cool the gas down before it goes to my my final filter which I made this radiator out of one and a quarter inch square tubing I made the whole frame out of it but the radiator in general is uh specifically is uh inch and a quarter square tubing eighth inch thick and I took these gas line pipes used a hole saw drill the holes out in the square tubing only one side obviously and then welded these pipes into it that way the gas can flow in through here, separate through each one of these up pipes, allowing that gas to cool so you're able to burn it better uh, at the end of your burn. And then pulls down into this filter, which this filter is a uh, medium filter. So I've got it filled up with basically a hamster cage. Well, not basically, it is hamster cage uh, wood shavings. So it goes into the bottom of this into the bottom of this uh, filter let me see if I can get it there you go up into the bottom of this filter here and it pulls the gas up through the filter through the medium cleaning out the last of the impurities well not particularly the last of them but a lot of them getting it much cleaner and then up top I will show you perhaps if I can do it with one hand. So this is an airtight, this is actually an old military uh, missile chamber uh, to transport uh, single missiles at a time in. So I thought it was a pretty good good thing to use. Picked it up at a, uh, called the yard, metal store. So this is the, the medium filter that I'm using. So as you can see, the pipe here is where all the pools coming through so it pulls the the gas up through that cleans the gas up then comes into this line which is where i have my fan now this fan is a uh a air mattress fan so it's got the in in and out so i piped this fan in here to be able to pull all the gas through the reactor uh, and you got to have a pretty good fan it's got a lot of sucking to do it's got to go through all of these bends and curves and through the radiator and then all the way out so outside of this fan goes into the pipe that is piped down to here which this is a T that I have in here and uh, I've got valves on either ends of this that I can shut off or turn on so this is the line that I've got made for pumping out to your generator or lawnmower or your carburetor on your car whatever you want to do to 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 utilize that fuel in a combustion engine but with this shut off um, I just pipe it straight up here I keep this on and I pipe it up to my torch so the way I know when the fuel is ready is I keep this off so no no gas is coming out of here no fuel is coming out of there and have this line on and it usually takes about five or six minutes for this to get up to temperature to go through its uh, process to uh, be able to extract the gas out of it. And then I'll fire this torch up. When I got that torch burning real good, I know it's ready to go. I'll shut the torch valve off here, forcing the gas to come this way, open this gas, 
line up and pump it to whatever I want to. This plate uh, comes off, um, which I just made a box, welded a box around that. Obviously cut, cut the tank open inside, welded a box around that, and then made a plate that bolts on with a gasket in between it to make sure it's completely airtight. So whenever this gets filled up with uh, ash, or actually it's gonna be biochar at the end of this, burn, uh, oxygen deprived environment, it's gonna give you great biochar, which we'll talk about later, you can use in, in a lot of different applications as well. It's really good stuff. But anyway, the plate comes off and I clean it out. So uh, this here is the intake port. So, or the ignition port, I mean, rather. So when you fire this up, I open this, stick a piece of newspaper right here, crank up the fan, and it's a, a major vacuum in there. So as soon as you light that paper, it just sucks that flame in there. It sounds like a jet almost, which lights the, the uh, biofuel I've got in there, the biomass that I've got in there. And as soon as that lights, of course, I cap it off, deprive it of its oxygen, come up top, and... I open up my air intake to regulate uh, how much air I want to be able to pull through this system. Um, whatever is working best for the temperatures outside and everything else that goes along with it. This is just an old pan that I made, I didn't make, that I cut out to uh, fit over my intake port here because this is my hopper where I feed it. So, got wood pellets down in there. And this is just so I can have more fuel um, in this in this particular bill so it burns longer And I put that on there limits that air now This isn't completely airtight by any means, but it, it definitely closes off a major air source so I can regulate it a lot better Off of this uh, PVC valve I've got connected to my air mattress fan. I went to Home Depot actually Lowe's um, I'll five to be specific and I bought this variable speed controller, which is you know for dimming lights really um, but it's really nice because you don't have to wire anything in. So it's a plug. The variable speed controller is part of this plug here. And then you just plug what you're plugging in into that. And then I can uh, control the speed of the fan. Thus, how much suction I'm pulling through there. How much air I'm pulling through there until I get it to where it's uh, set just right. Because, you know, these gas fires are temperamental. But with all these adjustable points between my valves on and off valves and this variable speed controller, I can really get it set really good, really easy and uh, keep a good consistent gas burning. All right, let's fire this thing up. It's cold and it's windy out here, so hopefully that wind won't keep the torch from blazing up, but we'll see what's going on. Let me show you how this works. First, we're gonna open up this ignition port. A little piece of newspaper. through that ignition port like that turn on the fan we'll crank it all the way up crank that all the way up we're gonna have this valve turned off so it's not pulling any air through the top of this that way we got a nice vacuum inside of here Hear that air sucking through there. Pick that up. Suck that flame straight down into that. Yeah, you can see that fuel in there starting to light up, turn into a cherry. So let's go ahead and close this off. Turn 
come up here, open this valve up, let some air in, and go ahead and open it all the way up right now. So right now it's uh, heating up the fuel that's inside of this reactor. It's coming in as it heats up, sucking up through this pipe into this cyclone filter. Down the cyclone filter, up that center tube, through the drip jars, all the way up here, it's blowing nice and hard. We ought to get some smoke out of there here pretty quick. So it's starting to smoke. It's been going for about two minutes. I don't know if you can see the smoke. Let's see if I can something behind it. it might be hard for you to see but it's smoking already well, let's see if we can light it already I don't know if that's the wind or if I just need to let it get a little bit hotter. But also, I'll probably turn down that fan a little bit. Slow that fan down. Definitely there, maybe another minute. It'll be ready to stay lit by itself. There it goes. Alright, went off. Another, another 30 seconds or something probably for it to get nice and nice and right to temperature but all together. Hell we're still under five minutes, four minutes. Turn that fan down a little bit more. There we go. It's hard to see the flame. It's a pretty fair flame, but what I'll do is I will throw a piece of paper up here. Over here, I'll grab a leaf. Show you that that is definitely on fire. All right, anyhow. Hope you liked it. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Catch my next build. I will be converting a lawnmower into a generator, and I will incorporate that into this gasifier. Thanks for watching.